Okay. Um, thanks for staying until the last talk of the day. Uh, this is joint work uh, with Aaron Roth, Alice Slifkins, and Jonathan Oman. Um, so uh, in this paper, we think about the problem of what we call uh, multi-dimensional dynamic pricing. Okay, so the pricing over happen over t number of rounds, and it, in each round t, uh, you can think of a seller that's selling d different types of divisible goods. Okay, so um, he will set a, a set of prices on these d different types of goods, and a random buyer with her valuation drawn from some unknown distribution shows up and look at these prices and decide to buy something, okay? Uh, purchase a bundle of goods. Uh, this is sometimes called a review preferences feedback, all right? So here, uh, the purchase bundle made, uh, this decided by the buyer will be the bundle that maximizes the so-called quasi-linear utility function, basically the value of the bundle minus the payment, all right? This is standard. Um, even though this section is called revenue maximization, um, the, the seller in this case is actually trying to maximize welfare, okay? So welfare in this case is defined as the, uh, expect the value, expected value over the bundle purchased by the buyer minus the production cost of producing such a uh, bundle, okay? Um, and here you see, uh, we use C to denote the production cost vector and X star sub V is the purchase bundle given the set of prices for some buyer with valuation V. Okay, so if you just think about this problem a little bit, it's actually a very simple solution to solve this problem. If you only want to optimize this objective function, okay, you can actually just set the prices equals the cost vector, okay? Um, the intuition is actually because of the form of the quasi-linear utility function of the buyer, okay? So you basically set the prices equals the cost so that each buyer individually would do the welfare maximizing uh, decision for the seller, okay? Uh, but if you are a thoughtful researcher, just like my co-author, uh, you will be slightly unsatisfied with this solution, okay? So uh, one particular complaint we might have is that the solution of setting prices equal, equal cost is completely oblivious about the balance of supply and demand in, in the underlying purchase decisions, okay? And we, in some realistic setting, the they may be constrained on the rate of production of each good or the rate of resupply of each good, okay? And if setting prices equals the cost induce every buyer to demand the exact same type of good, okay? Then the seller may not be able to accommodate all, all such demand, okay? So a more sophisticated version problem we consider here is to try to maximize the welfare subject to supply constraint, all right? Okay, so more formally, uh, given any supply constraint vector S, uh, we would like to find a price vector to maximize the, the social welfare P, such that the expected demand by the buyer is no more than S, okay? So just to remind you, the welfare is defined as false, okay? So this is the problem we wanna study here. Okay, so, uh, and here's the main result, just to forecast uh, what our algorithm does, okay? If we assume the buyers have strongly concave and hold our continuous valuations over these divisible goods, then we have a pretty computer, computationally efficient algorithm, uh, we call it O well, uh, the average polynomial number of runtime and number of rounds, uh, we can output the price vector uh, such that the expected demand will satisfy the, the supply constraint and we have uh, achieved approximate optimality in terms of welfare, okay? Um, so we would like to just highlight two technical points about this result. Uh, the first one is that the algorithm uh, actually only have access to the review preferences feedback, okay? So at any point of the, uh, the learning, the algorithm never see the value of the welfare or, you know, the value of the, the buyer. Uh, um, so, so we're actually basically optimizing a function that we never observe the objective values for. So I find it pretty interesting, okay? So how do we achieve this result? Uh, oh, sorry. Um, and uh, there are also two extensions of a line to mention, okay? So using this main algorithm as a black box, uh, we can actually solve different variants of this problem. Uh, the first variant is thinking about uh, the problem with indivisible goods, but with unit demand buyers, okay? Uh, here we have a pretty interesting trick, uh, what we call the price perturbation, which I will get to later in the talk. Uh, another variant of the problem is, you know, we don't actually have binding supply constraint in each round, but we have uh, supply constraint over, over round. So we have limited supply over, over time, 
Okay, so here we need to borrow some techniques uh, from the paper called Bandix with knapsacks and combine with the algorithms to create some more interesting result. Okay, so let's talk about how we can actually achieve the main algorithm. Um, so the key challenge here uh, for solving this main problem uh, is non-concavity. Okay, so the welfare function we wish to optimize is actually a non-concave function in the decision variables prices, okay, which is all the decision variables we get to control, all right? So how do we you know, optimize a non-concave function um, under polynomial time, right? So in this paper, we'll extend some of the ideas in our previous work uh, um, in stock 16, uh, which is designed for selling items to a fixed buyer. We try to extend these ideas to, to the setting with unknown distribution of buyers, okay? And using this technique, we can also solve our problem in this stochastic setting, okay? Right, so the key trick in this paper or in, or in our work is the idea of switching decision variables. So we have a non-concave objective function uh, in the prices, but another way to express the welfare is actually express the welfare in terms of the demand by the buyers, okay? So uh, in particular, consider the ex expected bundle induced by posting a price vector B, okay? Let's call it X hat, okay? Um, this is the, uh, another way to write uh, the, the wealth function in terms of prices. What we can show is that, is that the expected bundle is actually a sufficient statistic for determining the welfare of in, inducing by prices P, okay? In other words, we can actually express the welfare just as a function of the expected bundle, okay? Which turned out to be a concave function we can efficiently optimize, okay? And we can then use some of the you know, basic convex optimization tool to optimize this function. Even though we don't observe the value of this objective function, uh, we can characterize what the gradient of this function looks like at any bundle point, okay? So uh, actually, if uh, we have a price vector P that induces an expected bundle X hat, the sub, uh, one of the subgradient for this welfare function is the price vector minus the cost vector. Okay, so this is pretty nice. So we can optimize this welfare function even without knowing the, the value of the welfare, okay? But there's a new technical problem here, okay? So so far I've been talking about um, the you know, hypothetical world that we can actually directly control the demand. In real life, we don't actually do. We actually only control the prices, okay? So we somehow need another subroutine to translate the control of the expected bundle to the control of the prices, okay? So in other words, another sub-technical problem we know solve is to try to find prices to, ex to induce an expected bundle, okay? And I want to tell you that this problem of finding prices to in induce an expected bundle actually reduced to the problem of computing a variation equilibrium prices, okay? Okay, so uh, more formally, given the expected bundle X hat, okay, we can treat S hat as, kind of, as a kind of supply constraint and consider the following hypothetical welfare maximization program. Uh, the way to see this as a welfare maximization program is you can think of each uh, buyer I may show up with valuation VI with probability psi of VI, okay? And we wanna maximize this expected welfare subject to this expected supply constraint, okay? And what we can show that the dual solution for this welfare maximization program, or the equilibrium prices for this you know, problem, uh, actually induce the expected bundle X hat, okay? So, and computing this dual solution is basically a very standard of convex optimization problem. And here we will use the technique of stochastic gradient descent to compute the dual solution, okay? And specifically, we'll be uh, using gradient descent to update the pricing using the following rule. We'll be, uh, incrementing the price vector by the excess demand at each price, okay? Uh, to see why this corresponds to the gradient, uh, stochastic gradient descent, it's because uh, the excess demand given by any single buyer is actually an unbiased estimate for the expected excess demand given by the underlying distribution, okay? So by taking this step, we can actually eventually converge to the dual solution, and we have a price vector to in induce any target bundle we would like to query, all right? So to wrap up this algorithm, it's basically a two-layer solution. We basically first try to reformulate it as a concave objective function in terms of the bundles, okay? Then we can actually use some of the standard convex optimization tool like gradient descent to optimize over the bundle space. 
But however, we don't actually get to directly control the bundle, so we actually have a subroutine that translates between prices to bundles, okay? And this tool is also very nice in terms of uh, giving the gradient feedback for the upper level algorithm, which is the, the prices minus cost vector, okay? So, so this is basically a two subroutines, two layer algorithm alternating between each other, okay? So this is an overview of the algorithm. So finally, I would like to uh, briefly talk about uh, an extension I really like, uh, which is using the idea of these algorithms to solve a problem in a rather different setting, which is uh, the setting of unit demand by buyers with indivisible items, okay? So uh, in this setting, uh, you can think of each buyer shows up and buy a single item that maximizes the value minus the price of that item, okay? So, so far we've been talking about uh, a tool or an algorithm that is designed for solving problems for divisible goods. How do we use that to solve problem in this indivisible setting? Okay, so first step is very natural and simple. Okay, so uh, we can always consider the linear relaxation uh, of the evaluation, of the unit demand evaluation. Okay, so we can pretend that the buyer is purchasing bundle inside of the simplex, the probability simplex. Okay, so it's basically, we can pretend that it's optimizing uh, a, diff a slightly different form of evaluation, but the purchase decision or the review preference will be consistent. Okay, it will be the vertex of the simplex. Okay, uh, something I haven't talked much about is one of the key assumptions in the, the previous algorithm is the strong concavity of the evaluation function. So I haven't talked about that, but this is something I'm missing here by just thinking about this linear relaxation. Okay, um, it will be much better um, if the valuation of the buyer is somehow regularized, okay? I don't know how, but you know, for example, if the valuation actually is the linear part of the valuation plus an entropy term, then this, this valuation function will actually be strongly concave over the simplex. But we, like I said, that we don't actually get to control the buyers. We don't get to change how he think about the value of the items. We only get to control prices. How do we uh, make this thought experiment work out? Okay, so, um, so actually there's a very nice connection between price perturbation and regularization in the valuation, okay? So it turns out that if you perturb the price coordinate, uh, each co coordinate of the price is by adding gumbo noise, you don't know, need to know what gumbo noise means, uh, the expected perturb uh, best response by the buyer, or the, the purchase decision by the buyer, uh, will equal exactly the, the best response in the regularized valuation, okay? Uh, if you're familiar with online learning, actually, uh, this is a cute trick to make uh, these two algorithms equivalent, which is to follow the perturbed leader and follow the regularized leader, okay? Um, so this is very nice. Um, so basically, we can always set a price and then add noise to each coordinate and then obtain unbiased estimate for the regularized best response for the regularized version of the problem. And then we can use our main algorithm to solve the regularized version of the problem. And because the entropy term is, have, have a small scale, we can always get close to optimality. Okay, this is basically a sketch of how we use the main algorithm to solve this very different setting. Okay. Um, so um, there are some open questions um, I'm quite curious about. Uh, two of them that I'm most excited about is, one of them is, uh, can we use a similar type of techniques to do, uh, instead of welfare maximization, revenue maximization, which usually tend to be a, a harder problem. Uh, and I'm also quite curious about whether there are some other application of you know, this type of price perturbation technique, which I think of as a very interesting technique to achieve stability in the demand, okay? So maybe there, there's some, some interesting application in other problems in mechanism design that I don't know, but maybe you will find a better application. Thank you. <laughs>